Our final presentation before morning tea is from uh, Frederick Varid. Is that correct, Fred? Frederick Varid, who is state manager for Douglas Partners. Uh, Fred is a geotechnical engineer. He is going to explain to us in simple terms the site classification under the AS2870, which Jeff has already uh, touched on. So we'll have a slightly different interpretation or maybe just a clarification from Frederick. Thank you. <coughs> so good morning, I'm Frederick Vered. I'm yeah, Douglas Partners State Manager. Um, I've been working with Douglas Partners for 10 years in Perth now and uh, worked in France a bit be, uh, before. So site classification gained a significant uh, significant marketing value and have significant financial impacts for commercial and residential developments because it impacts the size of the footing and the amount of site preparation that is required prior to building the, constructing the building. So site classification is heard a lot. We, we hear class A, class S, class M site, but not always suitably understood. So the objective of this presentation is to clarify in simple terms uh, what the site classification means. So here's a Here's a plan of my presentation. I will first define what a site classification is in accordance with the standard. Then I will detail one of the parameters that is used in a standard uh, for, to assess the site classification, which is the depth of design instruction change, HS. It's just an excuse to go further in the explanation of the site classification. Then I put two slides on the impact of groundwater, uh, and then I will emphasize the two main factors that are used by the standard to derive the site classification, which are the climate and the ground conditions. And then one slide, I will finish with the significance of the standard for developments. So <coughs> let's start with the site classification um, and really what it is. Here's a soil profile. The farmer gives the scale. Let's assume that uh, uh, there is some clay within this profile. In summer, uh, the clays will dry, shrink, and crack. And that's an example of a dry clay surface. If we wear our three dimensional dimension goggles, uh, we can see the crack at the ground surface here and the crack in the vertical plan here. That's another example where the crack appears there just under the hammer. And another example just there. Um, so the clay shrinks in a horizontal direction but it will also shrink in a vertical direction, uh, resulting in a decrease, decrease in the ground surface level. The opposite will occur in winter, where the clay gets wet, uh, will expand, the cracks will close, and once the cracks are closed, then the clay um, will uh, push the ground upwards. So there is a seasonal variation of the ground surface between summer and winter. This is this S, and that's what the site classification is. Um, the site classification is not a specific measure of how good the site is. Um, it's a measure of the seasonal ground movement that results from the swelling and the shrinkage of clay materials from the variation of the moisture content uh, under the influence of the climate. So here's the site classification. A class A site means that there's no ground surface movement, means that there's no reactive clays. The soil profile includes either sand or, uh, includes the sand or rock, or the, the clays are deep enough not to impact the ground surface. A class S site means there are some slight movement at the surface, 20 mils up to 20 mils, M moderate movement, 40 mils, uh, H uh, high movement, uh, 70 mils, and extreme E class E site more than 70 mils. There's the last um, uh, class, which is a P class, which are all the other sites for which the ground surface movements are caused by other factors than the swelling and the shrinkage of reactive clays under normal circumstances. So for instance, the, the, the class P sites will include uh, low bearing capacity soils, instable ground, and control field sites, abnormal moisture conditions. <coughs> So I'd like to detail this uh, parameter that is used in the standard, which is the depth of design suction change, HS. Here's our soil profile, summer, winter, uh, the farmer gives the scale. 
we saw that uh, in summer the clays uh, shrink and the ground surface is going down, and in winter the opposite occurs, the ground surface is going up. There is a depth uh, to, from which the climate does not impact uh, the ground moisture content, and so be beneath this depth or from this depth there's no shrinkage and swelling of the clays. This depth is the depth of design switch and change HS. So it's the depth to which the climate impact the ground moisture. moisture. <clears throat> to go one step further with um, this parameter, the depth of design switch and change, um, if we plot the impact of the climate on the soil moisture versus the depth, uh, the standard assumes that the impact of the climate on the soil moisture linearly decreases um, with depth from the ground surface to, uh, to HS where there's no more impact of the climate. Some example of, uh, of um, depth of design suction change. Um, HS will be high where there's a great contrast um, of weather between summer and winter like in northwest Australia and inland where the climate will impact the soil moisture to a depth of six meters. So we can expect the clays to shrink some soil to a depth of six meters and HS will be lower where the contrast between winter and summer is mild, like in Albany where we've got uh, HS of 1.5 meter. In Perth, it's around uh, two meters. So let's see the impact of the groundwater on uh, the site classification. <coughs> so we saw that uh, uh, the impact of the climate on the soil moisture linearly decreases with depth from ground surface to HS. If we've got um, a shallow permanent groundwater level, um, the ground under the groundwater is constantly saturated, so there's no um, soil moisture variation, so the clays and beneath the groundwater will not um, swell and shrink. So only the ground above the groundwater um, will participate to the ground surface movement. The and the standard assumes that the, the impact of the climate will stop at groundwater level. So if we compare with, um, wrong button, if we compare with the dry case, let's assume that we've got some clays that results in 30 mils of ground surface movement. So we've got a class M site. In this case, because we've got only this amount of soil uh, reacting uh, between summer and winter, maybe we'll have only 15 mils. So that would be a class S site. So theoretically, theoretically, uh, a shallow groundwater seems to be good um, because it minimizes the variation of soil moisture content. The reality is uh, the groundwater will typically fluctuate uh, with season and thus magnify the variation of the ground moisture at depth and so that will result in greater uh, ground surface movement. So by comparison with a dry case, if we've got the same, we assume 30 mils of ground movement for a site, so a class M site, maybe for a fluctuating groundwater uh, at shallow depth, we will have 45 mils of ground surface movement, just because um, the, instead of having only the impact of the climate, we've got the impact of the climate plus the impact of the fluctuating groundwater. So that will not play in favor of site classification. <clears throat> I'd like to emphasize the two main factors that are used in the standard to derive the site classification. The first one, the first one is the climate uh, because um, it controls HS, the depth to which the clays will shrink and swell. And the second main parameter is the soil profile. Uh, because it controls the intensity of the swelling and the shrinkage of the, of the clays, of the ground. And to suitably des describe the soil profile, we need to know the ground geometry, uh, the thickness of the different layers of clay, sand, and rock, and the ground reactivity, how much uh, each layers of clay, sand, and rock shrinks and swells. So, <clears throat> What is the significance of uh, the Australian standard for developments? The standard associates each site, classification, each site classification to a standard foundation design and thus to a cost uh, for foundation system. 
So we saw that for class A site, we've got some small ground movement increasing, uh, and for class E site, we will have some large ground movement. Therefore, on a class E site, the footing size will be relatively small, and on a class E site, um, uh, the, the footings will need to be stiffer to resist to the, the ground surface movement, so we'll put more concrete, more reinforcement. Therefore, uh, the development cost follows the same trend. Um, also, the footing system is selected based on the ground conditions amongst most of the world and Australia. In WA and especially on the coastal plain, the usage is to adapt the ground conditions to a standard foundation system. So, in most of the world, if we have a class H site, um, we will adopt a foundation system for a class H site. In WA, we've got a class H site. We say, ah, we really want to use this footing system for a class A site. So we will change this class H site uh, to, uh, to a class A site, and that's typically done by uh, filling with sand. So that's our case, our local practice here. And of course, the more reactive the site is, the more sand you put the more sand you put on the site, on the site. Um, so the development costs follow the same trend. Here's my conclusion. Um, I just want to give uh, a summary, my, my own summary of, uh, of the standard of S2870. So S2870 suggests some standard foundation designs for five ranges of ground surface movement a, S, M, H, and E. That's caused by the swelling and the shrinkage of the clay. And that's under the influence of the climate. <clears throat> S2870 applies to normal moisture condition. So the standard doesn't cover um, any other factors that will impact the soil moisture, like shallow groundwater, uh, fluctuating shallow groundwater, drainage, um, um, leaking, leaking, leaking a plumbing system, uh, impact of trees. If you have a house and uh, with an existing tree, you cut the tree, uh, the tree will not suck the moisture from the ground anymore, so the, the ground will, um, um, will swell and the house is going to crack. And in those cases um, where we're outside of the standard, uh, the geotech engineer will use his engineering judgment um, to estimate the ground surface movement and uh, equivalent site classification. And AS2870 applies to houses or similar. <coughs>